know, we started making names right away. And we, I loved it. I was robbing drug dealers, taking their hold right off their neck. The shit we did, you know, who's going to call the police on you? A drug dealer? I can identify with anything that was normal, to be honest with you. But I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. 99% of the time, you're going to disagree. Just like the Donnie Brasco situation with Lefty. Yeah, or the reason why they figure it this way. You brought this guy around, he ratted on everybody, now he ratted on you. You might turn around and join him and rat on us, so if we get rid of you, there's no connection between there and there, and they get rid of you. Welcome to another episode of Chatting with Stacks. I'm your host, Bill Stacks, and today I got Rocco from the Mayans MC. What's up, man? What's up, bro? How you doing? I'm doing good. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Want to make sure so, um, it comes in clear. How did you get involved with um, getting into the uh, acting thing? You know, I start off with YouTube, and then from YouTube, uh, you know, I, I actually... Uh, let's back it up, man. In junior high, I, I got in a little bit of trouble, so they put me on a, on a group of knucklehead team. We, we did stage crew, so we did all the lighting and sound for the theater plays at the school. Uh, I mean, I grew up in L.A., so there's theater is is heavy and everywhere you go pretty much. Um, from, from that in high school, I was too shy to do it, but I always inspired to do it. I watched them. I, I, I walked into the theater room a few, a few times to try and join, and I was too shy to, to commit to that. And then when I went to college, uh, I was struggling with my grades. You know, I'm dyslexic. And so I've always had trouble with my education. And one of my coaches recommended that theater classes would be, would be pretty easy to pass. So I started taking some theater classes and started with an improv class. And from there, man, I just kind of got addicted to it. But, um, you know, baseball, my first love, you know, playing baseball in college and everything. And once that didn't go down the way it should have or the way I wanted it to, um, I decided to join the military and help, you know, pay the funds for my daughter who, you know, was recently born at the time. You know, she was born in 2002 uh, and, and I joined the military in 2003. Thank you for your service, man. Oh, no, no, no worries. Thank you. Thank you for support. After you joined the military, what what um, made you get in the direction of the Mayans? Was it your look? Uh, or- I mean, yeah, obviously, right? Like, like. I started doing YouTube out of the military uh, in 2013. I, me and my buddies became very well known in the YouTube space. Uh, from the YouTube space, I, I was like, man, we can do more than this. Like, let me try and do, I want to be a real actor, not just a YouTuber. Nothing wrong with being a YouTuber, but I aspired to do, I aspired to be an actor. I aspired to be a filmmaker. Yeah. yeah. And so we we made a f- movie. We actually did a crowdfund and raised some capital for a, very ridiculous kind of um man cult classic movie that's a veteran comedy and that was really the first real acting that i did and i kind of was like you know what i'm kind of done with this youtube scene i want to try and get into the real thing so i started going to la and kind of circling around you know actors and learning the learning the rules of it kind of how you know you kind of have to understand the system and how it works at the yeah. same same time, man, they're still they're still looking for the casting for Mayans. It was like timing, bro. Like timing was perfect. Yeah, I was in LA doing some improv comedy with a, a guy who has a YouTube channel called Dads and Parks, but he's been an actor for like thirty years. His what year is, was this? What this, year? This is two thousand sixteen. This is two thousand sixteen. This is the first pilot, pretty much. So that I, I'm in LA for spring break, me and my wife, we're kind of doing a vacation thing and then filming some YouTube stuff with this dude who 30 year in the game, I'm kind of really, men- he's mentoring me in management and everything. And at the time someone calls me, another homie who's an actor goes, hey bro, Mayans is still auditioning, man. You're in town, you should try and go. I was like, well, yeah, but who do I hit up? You know. And so he knew who the casting director was and so he gave me he he gave them a heads up about me so here's a dude who's an actor here's what he looks like i think he fit the part really well would you be interested in seeing him they saw my pictures and just said yes they had me write a bio they had me 
um, send some uh, an acting reel and some headshots, and they were like, "Yeah, tomorrow, be here at 10:30." You know, I was like, "Oh crap!" And from there, man, you know, I hit that audition. Uh, after that audition, I flew home, and then I got the call back to come back and do the audition in front of Kurt Sutter. And uh, within four days after that, man, I'm on set for my first big, big uh, part in acting. The Mayans came out after Sons of Anarchy. So they had some of the actors from the Mayans in Sons of Anarchy. So did you have any parts that in? No. So I'm part of the the young crew that just jumped in recently, right? So you have yeah. Emilio Rivera, who is plays Marcus Alvarez. He's been in from the beginning. Uh, he's really the only OG from Sons that cross over on the Mayan side. He'll have a couple of his dudes that he uses in the background, some guys that are familiar faces that you would have seen on 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 you know the sons but now yeah. most of the guys we use are are someone associated to us in some kind of capacity right so a yeah. lot of background actors that that you know homeboys industry we have a lot of we're, we're bringing a lot of uh, homies from homeboys industry to do some background acting and stuff like that and so yeah the only real og you got is marcus alvarez is emilio rivera they're going to be coming out with um another sons of anarchy i heard and is the mayans going to be any part of that no clue man that's that wouldn't be a place that i'd even there's such a disconnect between like us actors like i'm an actor and a producer in my own side of things i have no other involvement in any kind of capacity and ideas or, or or visions or anything right like yeah I'm not, I'm not a writer i'm nobody i show up they say here's what you're saying i'm like sounds good and i gotta bring that to life like that is the capacity of what i do for the mayans and then i'm also a tech advisor for the show right yeah. so that's the other side but when it comes to like potential other uh, you know other worlds that that come to existence because of because of the whole Sutter world that he created you know yeah. no idea I've heard rumors as well but um, yeah. no clue if we're ever gonna blend or come 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 together again with that that would be a good one man yeah it'd be crazy yeah what are the plans for the future of the show man you know again as an actor uh, I will be on the show as long as they want me to be on the show, as long as my character uh, provides value for the storyline of what the writers want to get across. You know, yeah. um, you know, I, and, and I say I'm an actor is like I just got an audition for another another show, you know, and I'm going to do that, you know, and I'm going to audition. Yeah. And if I get it, I'll be doing that. So then I don't know what the history in any of my career is. My career is really it's uh it's an unwritten book and i'm out here trying to just do my best it's yeah building. It's yeah building. bro yeah i'm here yeah. just do look i want people to give me opportunity so i can show them the levels of my acting capabilities i feel like um there's so much more to be shown you know i'm waiting for the opportunity to to give the world all that's in me you know all that yeah. trauma pain and and, and and everything i've ever experienced in life i'm ready to dump that on screen for someone to feel i yeah. think that's what is addicting to this career field is when people message you like man that was so relatable man i felt that like man there, there's no better no better drug in the world for me as being yeah. a creative and being able to tell these stories and bring them to life i used to be in the streets i was a gang member and i changed over to this and i love it i absolutely love it yeah like i, I want to trade it for nothing yeah, so I back in back in the day were you getting in trouble before you got into all this yeah but i wasn't you know I grew up in the San Fernando Valley. There's gangs everywhere, but I was never really associated with gangs. I was just a, a kid that fights, right? Like just, a, just my dad raised me not to take no. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. just that's just how it is, man. And um, yeah. that was, you know, part of me was maybe uh, the misconception of what he wanted me to be and what I what I kind of turned myself into be. And and now I understand why he was trying to raise me to be a tough kid. And yeah. you know really just just a mischievous kid that's always looking to get himself into something you know and that's really what it was i, I played baseball actively since i was four years old year round since i was seven and that was what my dad's i guess his mission to try and keep me off the street was involve me in sports and so you know i i'm always blessed to, to be a part of that and have that in my life and and you know i kind of give that to my kids as well and they're heavily involved in sports as well Ever since COVID happened, how is it um, filming the Mayans now? It's different, right? Because, um, you know, the way we do filming now is for this season. I don't know if it's going to continue, but when you call it, it's called block filming. And so 
so that you don't have to show up to the same set 20 different times you will film all those scenes within that same week at that same location so why is that hard for me as an actor because my actor is going through this you know this growth and emotion and emotion you know it's going through this whatever roller coaster of emotion yeah. i have to know are we filming episode one or are we filming episode seven because in episode one i'm like this in episode seven i'm like this and so us as an actor and trying to develop your character throughout the season it's it's kind of thrown out of whack so it becomes a very different process on how to be ready for your scenes but yeah. you know at the same time every Rehearsal is with our mask on, so you don't really get to get the full effect of the person that you're you're going to be working with. You know, there's a, the scene with me and Coco, where we're in the, where where the bikes are at, and and I'm kind of confronting him like, dog, what the fuck, right? And he's telling me he's done, he's done with that shit. Like that scene came to life after the third take. You know what I mean? Because yeah. the first rehearsal, he wasn't giving his emotion. I wasn't giving mine. I can't even see his face. He can't see mine. He just sees my eyes because we're wearing these damn masks and all that yeah. other all of, can i cuss <laughs> yeah yeah okay cool <laughs> and so so all that all that shit kind of takes away from the emotion and, and the rawness of it the, the first take we were kind of going back and forth you know and, and it's cool it feels good but like by the third one it started to feel real right like yeah. all that pain and angst and frustration i have with him and all his his you know quarrels with addiction um mm -hmm. it's it started to finally feel like man, I feel him, his pain, and he's starting to feel my concern. Yeah, and that's, you know, I th I think that's what made th this season a little bit harder. But man, we were blessed to be working when we did. We're one of the biggest television shows that got to finish a season with almost no issues at all. Thank you all for watching this show. I really appreciate you. Uh, you can, if you want to donate money to the show, you can click the Cash App button. Uh, there's just a link. Or you can uh, donate to uh, PayPal, Venmo. There's links in the description of this video. You press more and you'll see the links. But I appreciate everyone who takes the time to watch my show. There's a lot of big things coming. And I just finished editing some new materials, so I'll be dropping another show tomorrow. Part two of Don's, uh, Don McGuire, the Hall of Fame photographer for the UFC and boxing. Part two will be out tomorrow, probably 10 o'clock. Yeah, press more, uh, Keith. I really appreciate you too, man. Uh, Gianni, what's good? How are you? Stacy, Stacy. So I'm going to be handing out some wrenches to some people. And I think Tracy and Stacy are the people who are going to get some wrenches right now. So Tracy and Stacy, comment on this video in the comment section, not in the not in the um chat section in the comment section and i'll make you i'll throw you a wrench what's up rv docs how you doing man so um don mcguire's part two will be out tomorrow this uh episode just finished but i appreciate everyone who takes the time to watch my show i got a lot of things going on i got to handle some business Things are, there's only so much that I can do by myself, but I'm getting it done. I appreciate everyone who takes the time. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell so you can get my videos every time they drop. And remember, don't be a bitch.